So what is the capital asset pricing model anyways? Well, CAPM is a theory that states and also sets out in a formula that the cost of equity is equal to the investor's expected return. Risk drives return. And therefore, we need to estimate the amount of return that is required to compensate the investor for the risks that they are assuming when they make this equity investment. All right, so the equation states that the cost of equity is equal to the risk-free rate plus the expected return for the entire market. So that's this factor here. This is the expected return for the entire market um, in excess of the risk-free rate. And the, this is going to be adjusted for the individual stock's riskiness relate, like relevant to the market as a whole. And that's where this you know, beta function comes in. All right. So now a really key takeaway here is that it's only the non-diversifiable market risks that factor into returns. So only how much an individual investment fluctuates relative to the overall market. Okay. Now, beta in the Kaplan equation is a measure of the stock's riskiness relative to the overall market. And it's honestly, it's the only relevant measure of a stock's risk. Now, a beta of 1.4 means that if the overall stock market increases by 1%, this stock would be expected to fluctuate by 1.4%, 1.4 times the market change. All right, so one way of determining beta is actually to compare the historical share price returns with the daily returns on the market as a whole and and look at how this relationship fluctuates over time the problem is this approach actually has a few kind of problems with it or limitations first not all firms are actually publicly traded and so in that case tracking the value of the company in comparison to the market with enough frequency to be able to develop an estimate is really just not practicable oftentimes even if we can calculate the daily share price, we don't have enough historical data to be able to calculate the beta, right? We need a certain amount of data in order to generate you know, a dependable relationship. And then in the final case, the one that I believe most invalidates using historical data to estimate our beta is that the historical share price changes reflect the business at that time. So to the extent that the business or the business model has changed, or if the company's you know, financial structure or the industry makeup is no longer the same as it was you know, four or five years ago, then the historical data is really only going to give us an estimate of what the beta was at that time, not necessarily what it should be moving forward. All right? And if that's the case, then what do we do? How do we come up with a reasonable beta to use in our own cost of equity calculations? All right, let's first dive a little deeper into what affects a company's beta. To put it simply, anything that changes the volatility or the certainty of a company's earnings is going to affect its beta. So for example, if the industry risk is low and the industry performance is stable, then the company is going to tend to have less volatility in its earnings, and therefore it'll end up with a lower beta. If the company has relatively low fixed costs and therefore low operating leverage, the company's earnings are not going to fluctuate as widely and therefore it's going to end up having a lower beta as well. All right. And last, if a company has lower financial leverage, i.e. it has less debt in its capital structure, the company's earnings are going to be more stable and therefore the beta will be lower. All right. So to summarize, the firm's industry, as well as, as its investment, financing, and dividend decisions impact its beta. So you can see we're starting to tie this back to and tie it into the corporate finance first principles. All right, so now that we know the components of beta, instead of requiring historical data to estimate one, we can actually build our own. So first, we're gonna start with the industry average beta that will adjust to exclude some of the impact of the individual company financing decisions. So the benefit of this is that this industry average beta is gonna include both the industry and the marketplace volatility within it. And it's also gonna capture the industry's average operating leverage uh, impact on beta. Next, we're gonna adjust this beta for our current or for our target financing decisions. And we'll do this by what's called levering the beta 
using the company's debt to equity ratio. So, and with that, we'll then plug in our levered beta into the Kaplan formula, and then we'll use that to solve for our cost of equity.